Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Mountaineer Locker Room then and now. I'm Greg Chris, your host for tonight's show. And uh, man, we've got a lot of stuff to talk about uh, that's going on in the world right now. We're in the middle of March Madness, of course. Uh, we've got spring football cranking up. we got us a new basketball coach uh, to talk about. Uh, we've got some women's basketball we're going to talk about. So we've got all kinds of uh, good stuff to uh, to get on board with tonight. Uh, we hope you enjoy the show and, and enjoy our our uh, panel as we discuss all these things uh, that are in front of us. It's a busy, busy time right now. Um, you know, usually you think of springtime of everything winding down, uh, but it seems like it's just starting to crank up. So uh, we're excited for that, and we hope you'll enjoy uh, tuning in for tonight's show. We want to remind everybody, make sure you like and subscribe on YouTube. Uh, that helps us out tremendously. It helps us keep uh, to keep doing these types of things. And uh, uh, those of you regular watchers out there, make sure you let everybody, your friends and family know that they can uh, get on a like and subscribe. Uh, we appreciate that. And again, that's what helps us uh, keep this kind of thing going. So uh, uh, make sure you do that. And, and you can always tell them what I tell them. You don't necessarily have to watch, but at least like and subscribe and you can watch a little bit and uh, see if you like it or not. So uh, and I ho hopefully we we, uh, we try to make it so people will enjoy uh, watching it. And we encourage everyone. We've got some regulars that comment um, regularly with us. And there's one of them, Timothy Green. Uh, hi, Timothy, and uh, we, we appreciate those guys who always uh, chime in and help us out with the discussion, so feel free to do that. Uh, we get your comments on here. We try to respond to all of them if we can. Uh, not always possible, but we try our best, so make sure you uh, uh, help yourself to uh, to uh, chime in and, and uh, give us your opinion, give us your insights. Uh, we always appreciate that. And as I said, I'm the host of the show. The other host of the show, they kind of want to call him a co-host. He's the other guy. Uh, that's Frank Fear, and Frank is going to step in here and join us right now. Hello, Frank. Welcome. Hey, good to see you, Greg. Boy, you're right. We got a lot of talk to talk about tonight. Really? We enjoyed putting it together. Boy, uh, what isn't going on? And it's uh, <laughs> great. It's all great stuff, too. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I failed to mention we got a good baseball team out there playing baseball right now, too. Uh, that's another thing to talk about. So we we've, we've got all kinds of uh, topics. You know, what when you do a show like this. Uh, you're always trying to think, hey, man, what are we going to talk about? What are we going to talk about? And then you're on here for an hour, hour and 15, 20 minutes. You think, how am I going to fill that time? But, you know, there's so much going on now. You wonder how you're going to actually get it all in in the amount of time that we have. So good, exciting time. And uh, I think the first thing uh, we want to discuss tonight, we want to talk a little bit about March Madness. Um, I, I know my bracket is fully intact. I don't think I've missed a game yet, but I might have been looking at the wrong bracket. I'll have to go back and check yet. Uh, I'm not sure I got a game right. I should say that. <laughs> I don't think I picked one right. But anyway, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about March Madness. Uh, and as always, we have our uh, resident basketball expert uh, in the house with us. And that is, of course, none other than Mr. Daryl Prue. Uh, Daryl, welcome to the show, buddy. Hey, how are you doing? Doing great, man. Doing great. Good to see you. Yeah, nice to see everybody. I know you've been uh, consumed with all this basketball that's been going on, so we're going to uh, here in a minute, uh, jump into our, our March Madness discussion first, and then a couple of other things. We'll talk a little bit about uh, uh, the women's game the other night, and uh, I know that's on a lot of people's minds when you see all the uh, social media about that, so I know people will, will enjoy that discussion, <laughs> so, yeah. I'm sure. Uh, we also have with us another uh, special panelist tonight that we've had on before. Uh, he is back with us, and of course, uh, those of you uh, that have watched any part of the show or know anything about WVU is Mr. Stone Wolfley uh, joining us tonight, and uh, uh, of course, you see the logo in the back, Wolfman's Call. It's uh, his father's show uh, a while back and, and uh, one that we've all been on and one that we enjoyed watching. And uh, Stone, we appreciate you uh, taking the time to come in and join us. Oh, yeah. Thank you for definitely having me. And Yeah, it's, the sign's uh, there, but it's not on. So. so you can see, Frank, I don't know, but the technology these younger generation guys have, it took me a week to figure out how to get my background blurred out so you can see all the junk behind me. I, there's no way I come up and get something like that on my background. <laughs> I'm about to work on this stuff. <laughs> there <laughs> you go. And I just uh, <laughs> sure, got to make sure Dale's with us tonight, too. There he is. That's, right. That's exactly right. All right. First thing we're going to talk about, again, is the March Madness uh, that's going on. We're down to the Sweet 16 now. And uh, uh, like I said, my bracket pretty well blew up after the first, first two or three games. Uh, but uh, it's been a, a pretty exciting tournament. We've seen a lot of good basketball. Uh, we've seen a lot of mid-majors play really good basketball, and I think we've talked about that before. Uh, and and my opinion on that has always been these mid-major teams have guys that's played for several years together, and uh, they're also 21, 22 years old. 
Uh, when you take on a Kentucky team, they've got, you know, five guys out there that are 18, 19, been together for one year. So they call those upsets. I'm not always sure those are upsets, but uh, these mid-major teams are for real. They can play. And uh, these kids that they have are grown kids and mature. Uh, they're men, you know, and they can play. And uh, so it's been uh, it's been a good tournament so far. Uh, Daryl, I'll jump to you first. You're our basketball guy. What, uh, what What's your thoughts on the Sweet 16, what it's boiled down to? Well, you know, uh, there's a couple of teams that's making runs. You know, NC State has made a run. You know, they yep. they stayed hot through the ACC tournament. They got a good inside-outside game. Um, I think right now the coach there is ruining uh, uh, the – I think that he was about to get replaced this year too. So, yeah. he's yeah. making his little run. And, <laughs> you know, all these coaches are, you know, getting replaced and they making runs. So now it's hard to, you know, <laughs> let them go. So it's, it's – <laughs> It's it's a whole it's a whole bunch of stories going on, and like you said before, you know the mid majors in Kentucky. I think the Kentucky thing, uh, what people are not saying, uh, uh, is um, those guys are not Derrick Rose. They're not Andrew right. Davis. Yeah. They're not yeah. uh, John Wall, John yeah. Wall, or Cousins. You know, they yeah. they're, they're talented potentially. You know, right. pros later on. But they're not, you know, those that type of talent, you know. So right, right. just that type of talent now, you know, because you know it's you know it's, it's still Kentucky, it's still top ten in the country, top fifteen in the country. That doesn't mean they're that Derrick Rose level or that Anthony right. Davis level. So people get misconstrued on how they see it, you know. What I mean, so we go, oh yeah, great player, he did this, he did that, until he actually do it, you know, right. two different things. And I don't know what what's your thoughts about the the age thing. I always felt like you know these guys that's been in, been in college for four, three, four, five years, uh, you know, 21, 22 years old. There's a difference, and you work with young people a lot, so you know, in a 17, 18 year old kid, and what there is a 21, 22 year old man. Uh, in my opinion, I always felt like there was a big difference. And I, I don't know, you you work them out, and you you're around them, so you know. What's your thoughts on that? I was different in 18 and 21, 22. So, you know, most yeah, oh, yeah. years I was a different person as a as a freshman. You know, you've been through the wars. Right. And, right. Um, you know, now they're coming in at 20 and 21. They're coming into right. it as freshmen. You know, True. these guys are 25, 26, 27 years old. I was yeah. I was all the way in my, you know, playing overseas somewhere, you know. Right. So I right. the next place to play. But, you know, it's it, it, uh, it's a big advantage. You know, from a teenager to you know a twenty, you know twenty, twenty-one year old man uh, yeah. in his first year, and then the an eighteen-year-old teenagers. You know, you know, you always play against older people, which is okay, but like some of this stuff is ridiculous. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it is. And, and, and you know, so far, and Frank will jump to you next, but uh, so far, a couple of the number one seeds are are still hanging on, which is uh, kind of unusual at this time. But there's some really good teams uh, left in this thing. Obviously, they're in the Sweet Sixteen. Uh, there's some we expected to be there, some we didn't expect to be there, and uh, but it looks like it's you know watching these guys play. It looks like pretty good matchups all across the board. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things, uh, as I've mentioned before, that I do every year, and I love it, is to look at the Davids uh, in the tournament and uh, who might knock off a Goliath. And you know, it really right. does depend on the matchup. That's obvious. But this year, I was a little bit worried because some of these matchups, for example, St. Peter's. Uh, which played really well at the end of the season to win their uh, their conference, uh, mm -hmm. matched up against Tennessee. I mean, their leading scorer was one for, for St. Peter's. Uh, Tennessee just basically said, if we can stop him, we can beat him. And uh, Corey Washington was one for nine. And he yeah. was his tournament MVP. But I'll tell you what, uh, besides the upset of Kentucky, which uh, uh, I'm not going to say I called, but I said, watch out for Oakland. Um, and also Grand Canyon. I said, watch out for Grand Canyon and James Madison. For me, the highlight of the tournament so far is this. Right there. Yes. Yeah, that was pretty cool. <laughs> that looks like that's the Yale band. Right, right. It is not the, right. <laughs> the Yale band. In fact, let me see if I can uh, can throw this up here. Uh, I call this, uh, this is Idaho. And uh, what you have there is uh, Yale band couldn't get out of there because of travel issues. And so uh, somehow they made a connection with the University of Idaho, which is about an hour away from Spokane. 
And so they gave them, you'll see it here, they gave them shirts, Yale shirts. Yep. So all these kids that have these Y shirts on, uh, the cheerleaders, <laughs> the band, they're all from the University of Idaho. That's their Idaho. color. Hello. Yeah, and, That's and just something else, right, sorry, sorry, I apologize for interrupting, but something else about that is uh, in that one day, they learned the Yale fight song and they played it during the tournament because <laughs> I had to learn the song. <laughs> the same day. Now, you see, that to yeah. me, that's one of the endearing yeah. things about college sports, that yeah. there's still room for, uh, for, for a story like that, I think is great. And those two schools yeah. now are going to be connected. Uh, for, that's right. Uh, yeah, I think that's right. Really but, you know, the interesting thing about it, and I'll stop with this, uh, Greg, is you said earlier about the number ones. Um, you know, um, you were a coach, Daryl played, uh, Stone's an athlete, but I look at University of Connecticut and I say, who is going to, who can stop them? Yeah, they're they awful they're a machine. Uh, yeah. and they prepare so well to yeah. basically deal with each opponent, uh, to be able to attack. It's just very impressive. Yeah. Yeah. They're awful good. And, and, uh, from what I've seen, I have. I haven't seen anybody in there that I think can beat them yet. I mean, it's not to say they won't, they won't get beat somewhere along the line, but they're awful that going good. They're they're pretty solid all the way around. So yeah, it, it'll be interesting to see how uh, see how they do because, like I said, they're they're a good basketball team. And like you said, they prepare so well. They just they just seem like they're ready for everything coming at them. And uh, of course, that's credit to their coaching staff and and uh, uh, the players buying in. It's it's fun to watch them. They're a good basketball team. I think the most you know, one of the most interesting uh, matchups, so uh, I think, is the Iowa State Illinois game. Um, I've seen both those teams play several times, and and I think that might be um, maybe the best game of the weekend. Uh, those two, um, of course, I think it don't come on until like ten o'clock at night, so a lot yeah. of people won't be see it. <laughs> but but you know, Iowa State plays really good defense, and uh, um, you know they're not a, not a great offensive team, but they they're, they do fine. Illinois is a great offensive team, so it's going to be interesting to see how they match up. And Illinois is really good too, so that should be a good matchup. Stone, I don't know, uh, I don't know how much uh, a follow you give the basketball. I don't know how much you watch of it. Uh, you got any anything uh, insights there you'd like to put into this? Um, well, uh, I came here talking about football tonight, but <laughs> I didn't want to put you on the spot. But sorry. <laughs> oh no, that's why, we, that's why we pay you such good money. You know, come on, you, you <laughs> oh, get put on the spot every now and then. But um, you know, Sweet Sixteen, you know, this is starting to starting to wind down. You know, uh, number one seats are still in. You know, you gotta stay focused in, th in these situations. You know, it's just which team can stay on task and not get distracted, not let the outside world, you know, contaminate their mindset for this tournament. You know, it's gonna come down to um, uh, who who took the most reps in the off season. You know, this is where it's really gonna matter because you know, in like the state championship. Uh, like Sharon Young, you know, he's he's the type of guy uh, for, for Morgantown High School, sorry. Yeah, for Morgantown yeah. High School, uh, the, the state championship for the third year in a row. You know, Sharon Young, yeah, he's the type of guy who will go into the gym and train for four hours and just practice his shots over and over and over again, practice dribbling, practice, practice the fundamentals. And that added up, you know, in the state tournament, you know, on the final shot, he had, a, he had to make a, a big three. And, uh, you know, he stepped up and he made it and so all those reps, you know. So when, when I say, you know, it's going to come down to who worked the hardest, you know, he uh, we're going to we're going to find out. And then, you know, the, the sweet six are coming up here soon. I mean, it's, it's starting to narrow down and um, we're going to see who steps up. I think yeah. it's really a time time of the year, too. Um, and Daryl can attest to this. Uh, I think this shows uh, a lot of coaching, you know, abilities, what comes out in a coach, because, uh, you know, you have a few days to prepare and then there's other times you have one day to prepare. And when you watch teams play, you can tell how well prepared they are um, for, for what's going on in the game. And, and I think it's, a, you know, credit to these coaches when they do have their team so well prepared. And there's quite a few of them that do that. You can tell who the, I yeah, think you yeah. know the difference in the coaches and their styles and that sort of thing. Daryl, I, I know you've coached. What do you think about that? Yeah, you know, sometimes, you know, the these, you know, coaches want to get cute and, and try out all these different things and you know, yeah. don't work this time of year. Do you do what you do. You know, right. Connecticut does what they do. 
And mm-hmm. as we saw with Gonzaga, they they did what they do. You know, they had all their players and they picked you know, they picked teams apart. And his skill level, you know, he, you know, he talked about Sherrod Young. I seen him playing in the D.C. area uh, over a year ago, and I thought he was a very good player. Um, uh, and uh, I'm, you know, happy for him. I know his grandfather, Jambi, um, yeah, yeah, and uh, his mom. So, you know, it was it's a great victory for Morgantown. But you know, this, going back to the Sweet 16, it's uh, you know, it's you know, sometimes it's, it's a little bit of luck going with you know yeah. with a lot of ability oh, yeah. coaching. So you know. Sometimes, yeah. you know, like the, you know, the St. Peter's kid, he go, you know, there's it's, it's a big difference when a team like Tennessee with different kind of athletes come at you, you're the number one option yeah. and, you, yeah. and they try to take you out. So you're going to feel that kind of pressure. Yeah. You know, can you handle that pressure, to, you know, the whole game yeah. and, you know, yeah. you know, that kind of conditioning and, you know, that kind of readiness, yeah. you know, they go against yeah. those guys every day in practice. So they, they yeah. just, it was up for it. You know, the one well, thing that uh, I was going to say, Greg, the one thing that, applies in football and basketball uh, is this selection committee. All the brouhaha with the football. And if you look, let me put this up right here. Is the, if you look at, at how many teams got selected from the various power conferences and then how the, how the teams perform, the incredible uh, diversity of performance there. I've got in red, uh, you know, the number of, in the first column, selection picks. Big 12 and the SEC had the most picks. Uh, was it eight apiece? Uh, yeah. And then if you look at the performance, they're at 25%. Uh, <laughs> the, I think the Big East got just hosed with uh, St. John's and especially Seton Hall not getting in. Uh, but every single one of those Big East invites uh, have made the uh, Sweet 16. And you look at the Atlantic Coast, and the only one that's dropped out, and they didn't even make it past the play-in, was UVA. All the others, yeah. and so you got 100% of the of the Big East um, in terms of making it to the Sweet 16, and then 80%. Uh, and I'm still I, I'm very disappointed. And maybe you guys yeah. watched Indiana State last night. They look yeah. really good. This uh, yeah. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar uh, <laughs> underneath. He, he really won the game with a long three. Uh, when it came down to crunch time, they're they're cruising in the NIT, but they should have been in the field too. Yep, and I know this this could be a discussion for another day, but the teams, um, especially the Big East teams, that uh, rejected the NIT, I, I thought that was a huge mistake on their parts. I know they were upset. I understand that, but why not? You know, look at it and say, you know, we're gonna get this many more practices with our kids. We'll get this many more games with our kids, and we got a point to prove. I mean, you just think if if St. John's, uh, the other Big East team got neglected, I forget which one it was, but um, if they would have got any NIT and would roll on and you have 100% in the Big East in the, in the NCAA tournament, and then you'd have all these NIT teams from the Big East winning in that tournament, what statement that would make. And I, so I was kind of disappointed when they decided they weren't want, going to go uh, to yeah. the NIT. I thought that was – I thought that was a little uh, – Childish. <laughs> but, but, yeah. I don't know well, you know, look at what happened to St. Bonaventure athletic yeah. director. He made the call and he was let go. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. fans were so upset. He was let go. Right. You know, there's another yeah, point. I, here. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, I was going to say in St. Bonaventure, you know, I'm not saying it's not a great program, but um, I mean, you got to build that program and you go win an NIT and then, and then the next year they're looking at you, you know, you don't just say, now we're too good. We're not playing in that. Uh, yeah, I think that was a huge mistake on all, all our parts. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there's a point that uh, along the lines of football and basketball, Daryl brought it up this week and I'm throwing it up now. And that's uh, the issue of money um, yep. and uh, the amount of money that's coming in on the revenue side, which is on the right hand column. Uh, on the right hand column is the, the number that uh, revenue coming in for the 16 uh, sweet 16 teams. And then on the left-hand side is the profitability. Uh, The money is nowhere near football. But one of the things, uh, guys, that I noticed uh, after Daryl sent this to me was, you know, Gonzaga's number three there, $17 million a year coming in. But they don't have to spend a penny on big-time football. Marquette doesn't have to spend a a penny on on big-time football. And you go down the list, uh, Creighton is on that list. Uh, and it does make a big difference. 
Uh, and then if you look at the at the most profitable, uh, those are a lot of big time programs there. The one that sort of surprised me was Arkansas, but the other ones, Indiana, Purdue, Michigan, Illinois, Duke, Syracuse, you know, uh, maybe a little bit, but UNC. And I, I'll stop here. I, I looked at, um, uh, this is great because it's on the WVU uh, webpage. I said, okay, now how does WVU stack up? Uh, against the the revenue side and also the profitability. And what I found, and it's right on the WBU website, as well as in other sources, uh, really well. Uh, the revenue is about 15 million a year, uh, which positions them right about in the middle uh, of the Sweet 16 teams. And the profitability is about 5 million a year, which is lower, uh, but we wouldn't expect WVU to be among the most profitable. Um, but what do you guys think about those data? Yeah, I think the uh, uh, the money talks. <laughs> you know, and you look it at does. That, and like you said, I think that's a big thing with the football. You know, you're not having to share that football because you know I'm old enough to remember when uh, nobody ever heard of Gonzaga. You know, and they've built that basketball program, but like you said, they've got all that revenue to to do it. You know, and uh, you know. Uh, you look at at uh, Duke at UConn. You know, I'm sure they probably put more into into basketball than do football. But uh, you look at um, you know a Duke or a or a, a Tennessee or somebody like that. They have plenty of money, so they can you know they can throw that into their uh, into their teals, and the revenue uh, just produces more revenue and produces better teams, et cetera, et cetera. So I think money talks, and I think you can see that. Hey, you Meryl, look at what you think. You you look at the the top the top three, you know, is basketball schools, right? Which is surprising. You know what I mean? Like, you know, Duke is, is still ACC, but you know how many Final Fours they've been into? I mean, UConn right. and 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 Gonzaga. You know, even Marquette. I don't know if they have a football right. team. You know what I mean? So there's kind of I don't think they do. They wanna, they, yeah, so they got that and Iowa State. You know, that's what that's Big Twelve and. Yep. You, uh, UNC, S, uh, ACC, you know, you don't see a lot of big, you know, you see what Alabama's on here. So it's, 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 it, you know, it's, it's a funny thing, you know, it's like, what you know, the profitability I look at over here, UNC, they bring in 24, they would bring in 14 and they make a net of 20. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's a lot. You know, Syracuse not even on here, how much their revenue is, mm -hmm. but they bring in, you know, 19 and Duke, you know, they like they lose a little bit of money, but they, you know, the revenue comes in, but they're really not losing. But, you know, I think, you know, it's TV, uh, TV, you know, I don't know how, what the state TV for West Virginia, you know, the ESPN deals and stuff like that, because they've been pushing us to ESPN plus and all that stuff. So people don't get a chance to see it. Um, I think one of the reasons why uh, West Virginia went in the Big 12 to get into a TV market and with um, Texas, you know, yeah. so, you know, I think they went the wrong way. I think they should go more towards the east than they go towards the west. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So uh, we'll, we'll kind of cut this down here that we've been going on a long time. Let's go ahead. And Frank, who you got? Uh, who you got winning the whole thing? Get, get you pick your new bracket. Well, you know, I'm looking at uh, the south and south is playing the Midwest, west playing the east to get in. And, um, you know, it. I think it's going to come down to uh, Purdue and UConn, and I just don't. I, the confidence I have in UConn is just the opposite with Purdue. Every year something happens. Uh, you know, they, they they're cruising so far, but they they have a history of getting knocked off by the mid majors. That's not going to happen this year. They got through okay. that thicket, but I just you know, Purdue is their big man carries them, and that's great. But yeah. UConn is, and UConn has a big man too. So mm -hmm. um, I, I got to go with UConn, and that's right. that's uh, that's the uh, that's a low hanging fruit. <laughs> All right, Daryl, who you got? Yeah, I think UConn's going to win it. You know, I'm, uh, the NC State team, you know, they they on fire. Uh, it's like they are. They won what they now with nine in a row. It's yeah. it's you know, it's, you know, teams are. Peaking at this point, and like you know, like you said, Greg, UConn is at a whole different level. Um, I like also like you know Gonzaga. If they got to keep playing like that, 
that could be a problem. And, and then yeah. North Carolina, they battle tested. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. you know, they won it last year. You know, it's the same guys back. So it's going to be a very interesting once it gets down to the, uh, the Elite Eight in, in the uh, Final Four. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I think so too. Um, so you got a pick? Yeah. Um, if, you know, if UConn keeps up what they've been doing, keeping that energy and, you know, staying focused, UConn. Mm -hmm. All right. So all you guys took the easy pick. I'm still sticking <laughs> with my championship team, and that is Iowa State. Now, uh, on the other side of the bracket, I had Kentucky. So you know how that went for me. <laughs> so I don't have a pick on the other side. So I'm going with Iowa State to win the whole thing. <laughs> So we'll see. <laughs> You're after, well after, watching, after watching UConn play, I'm like, yeah, they got to switch that up. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah I, I still think UConn uh, is the best team. I don't think there's any question about that of all the teams I've seen. But like Daryl said, you know, North Carolina is, is really good, playing well. Houston's good. Um, North Carolina State's on fire. I mean, there's still some good teams, uh, good state teams left. And I think it's going to be fun to watch. I can't wait to watch it. Only problem I have is the TV schedule, which we'll save that for another time, which I think is yeah. awful. But anyway, um, but before we move out of basketball, uh, we uh, watched a girls game the other night, and I guess most of us watched that. Uh, I don't watch a lot of girls basketball, but I did did watch – or I tried to watch. I got so mad I turned it off, and I turned it back on, I turned it off, turned it back on. Um, I know everybody is uh, really irate about the officiating. Um, I was more, uh, you know, not – I thought the officiating was poor. I thought that, um, you know, I thought West Virginia did foul a lot and they probably deserved most of the foul calls they got. But um, the no calls on the other side is what drove me crazy is the fact that you saw people clearly getting fouled and nothing being called. And, uh, but I think one thing was exposed and I think that is uh, Caitlin Clark's attitude. And I think a lot of people are talking about that, man, she act like a, uh, they and she was rough. I mean, she complained about every single call and uh, said some awful things that you can clearly see on the screen. I'm like, you know, somebody above my pay grade needs to really, I think, talk to her and say, listen, you're the you're setting the example for you know thousands of little girls out there uh, that'll be playing basketball at some point. Uh, you need to clean it up just a little bit. Um, you know, I just I just thought that was really uh, the big thing that came out. But I felt like that. Um, I'm not so sure even with better officiating, the Mountaineers could have beaten them, but I thought the Mountaineers played well. They were very scrappy defensively. Uh, they just couldn't make shots when they needed to, but uh, but I thought they gave them all they could handle. Frank, we'll go to you first and get your analysis on the game. Yeah, let me, uh, while we do that, let me uh, put this up right here. Uh, I bet there's nothing I about you're gonna ask, I thought you were going to ask me that, so I figured, <laughs> okay, I got five <laughs> points here. I got five <laughs> points. Let me, uh, let me get uh, that. Uh, Comment on it there for a second so you can see everything. Where is it? I think, okay. I think we got most of it on it. Yeah. Yeah. Let me get it. There we go. There, there. Uh, I thought there were, first of all, uh, the number of people who watched it. When you think about the number of eyes on WVU in the bowl game, which was, I think, eighth among all, uh, among, among non um, uh, final six in football, New Year's six. Uh, I think we were ranked sixth in the country. You got 5 million viewers, uh, more eyes on WVU Iowa than any other game uh, except in the women's uh, final four. That's history. Uh, the, the key there, obviously, is number two, 22 point difference in what came from the line. Uh, that's incredible. You know this. Uh, you guys yep. are all coaches. When you get that kind of disparity, it's tough. But what I liked was that number three, and it reinforces the points that our viewers have made tonight. Uh, they're well coached. Uh, they had twice as many assists, WVU did, twice as many steals as Iowa, and twice as many fast break points, and half as many turnovers. The only thing they lost was the rebounding, uh, seven rebounds. Uh, Iowa had more. I, that's just terrific. I thought when I was watching the game, if we had hit more threes, but then I looked at the stats and found that that's pretty much what we do. The average for the yeah. season is 32%. Uh, we hit 27%. And I don't mean to point out certain players because, you know, everybody has great games. Uh, you know, look at this go a goalkie guy for Oakland. He's 13 point a game scorer and he hits 10 threes against Kentucky. You know, everybody right. has their night and people don't have their nights. But I was looking for Harrison and Fields. The two of them combined for three points 
and Fields was shut out. And together over the season, they've averaged 23 points a game. So if you take that, number five, uh, and then you add it to number two, the disparity in um, in uh, free throws, uh, it's amazing it was a close game. And that yep. just goes to show you that WVU played a hell of a game, and it was, I think, the stock value of, of WVU's women's basketball has just gone up big time. Yeah, And I'm not sure, Frank, uh, I'm not certain on this, but I think I read where – uh, we had more threes and more field goals uh, than Iowa did, and it was You're just right. a it's free, free throw line. And uh, yeah, that's 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 tough to take. But uh, you know, and you mentioned the two shooters for WU. Um, you know what I watched, what I saw. Um, they shot a lot of uncontested threes and just couldn't make them. They just weren't hitting their shots. And uh, so it's you know what a lot of people say. Well, it was good defense, but and I don't know. They, they had a lot of uncontested shots and just didn't go in. And, uh, you know, I think, uh, but I think, like you said, the free throw line made the difference. Uh, Darrell, I know you watched it. Yeah, you know, you, you look at what, what that Frank put up, you know, yeah, you know, the free throw, the foul comparison, but the key was, you know, your two best scorers, one of your two, you know, out of your five, you get three points. You're yeah. not winning no games like this when your best players don't step up. You know, you can have bad games. You can have average games. You have your average. If they get right. their average, it's a different game. Yep. You know what I mean? So, you know, then, you know, people would get frustrated about how the way the game was called. You know, I think right. Washington plays that way. They play that yeah. up in your oh, face. Yeah. Kind of, so there's, you know, like when I was at Georgetown, you know, Villanova plays like that, you know, uh, and, uh, and you know, VCU used to play like that with Shocker Smart. So they don't call a lot of fouls because that's all they, you know, they can call fouls on every play if they do. Um, you know, some of the stuff with Caitlin Clark, you know, when you're that good, sometimes, you know, you got to be a little asshole to, to, you know, to be good like right. that. Uh, right. You know, her personality on the court and her personality off the court is probably two different things. I'm not going to judge uh -huh. how she is on the court. You know, that may be what keeps her, or gets her going, you know. You know, some people are quieter about theirs and some people are, you know, they demonstrate more, you know what I mean? Like she's not dirty, you know, she got away with some stuff, but, you know, she's great. Yeah. And, 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 you know, and people coming at her. So we don't know what's being said to her, how she's being hit. Uh, Cause there's a lot of stuff that goes on that, you know, you don't hear and see, you know, you just see people react. So, um, you know, West Virginia did a great job. We can't win every game. You know, we always want to win every game. We get mad when we don't. We like to blame. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, oh, yeah. I mean, you know, if people don't step up, you're not going, you know, you got two people who, who average 23 points and they got three. Yeah. You know, if they yep. get, you know, oh, yeah. get, if you turn it around and just get 20 points, you know, you win the game. So, or 10. You know what I mean? Right. So, you know, it's just, yeah. you know, it's an unfortunate situation. It was a great game. Uh, West Virginia did well for themselves. They put themselves on the map a little bit as far as women's basketball. And uh, I think the future is bright for them. Oh, yeah. And I, two things there on, on what you said. Uh, one, you know, the aggressiveness of WU's defense, it, it's, it's going to create fouls. There's going to be fouls. And, and uh, when I was coaching high school, we played a team at, uh, at well, he went to WU. Jay Hewitt played for him. Had about 10 guys that could all play, and he just substituted them constantly. They full court press you and they beat you to death. And he even told me one time, he said, We knew they wouldn't call them all. And he said, I had enough players that if somebody fouled out, I was okay. And he said, I knew the rest work will call all of them because, uh, you know, they could call foul every single play. So that is true. And I thought WG did foul. I mean, I, I, I wasn't just, you know, I didn't think the rest did a bad job calling those fouls. I thought, I thought they did foul a lot. I, there were some no calls on the other end I thought were questionable, but I don't know that, you know, that that totally made the difference in the game. I think what Daryl said, our shooters didn't shoot. And when your scorers don't score and that's your people that score, um, you, you know, you have a hard time winning. The other thing about Clark, uh, you know, maybe that does motivate her. I don't know what it is. The only problem I had was when there was a time when the camera was right in her face and she dropped the F-bomb said she made a free. Yeah, yeah. Shut the okay. F-bomb. I'm like, yeah, Those camera angles are all over the place. That's so, right. Yeah, yeah you, you know. got to watch it. And I just felt like she needs to know that a lot of young kids are watching her, you know, and, and 
I don't I don't know that that's what she needs to be yeah. displayed. I mean, it's it probably not will hurt her much, but you know, a lot of people talked about it, and it was all over social media and uh, even the national media were were talking about her behavior. And uh, I, just, I don't know, you know, it's not good. I just don't. I think I think the NBA do it all the time. The college players do it all the time. It's a female, you know. What I mean, she. Well, she could be. Yeah. yeah, I mean, like it's you. Believe me, you may go to a close to an NBA game or. Oh uh, yeah. yeah, close to that floor. There's a lot of stuff that's being said, uh, and usually the referees, if it's that bad, the referees will step in there. And uh, I, you know, I was trying to figure out who she was telling to shut up because. She was playing at home, and yeah, her daddy uh, told her to shut up. <laughs> her dad told her to shut yeah, up. Yeah, daddy told her to shut up. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> maybe she's, maybe he was talking she's to her. Yeah. yeah, maybe she's a good player, though. You can't take that away from her. She shoots yeah. the basketball, that's for sure. But uh, Stone, I, I guess you watched the game as well. Oh yeah, first of all, no, very proud of you know Coach Kellogg and the, the girls team. I think they were very well, especially in that game. I mean. We were we were just all over the place uh, schematically, you know, um, taking the ball away, you know, and then at the end there, it just kind of kind of just fell away there a little bit, you know, as far as yeah. uh, shooting. And uh, <laughs> Coach Tallman knows this, uh, Maurice High. I, I don't I don't coach shooting, so I just coach the boxing out. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good job. You look like your daddy, the physical part. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> to the table, I man. Bet those, some of those guys would be good basketball players. It's big and physical as they are. They'd be fun to watch. So. All, All right, right. Let's, let's move along here just a little bit. We got uh, we got news on the men's side as well. We uh, we got us a new uh, new men's coach, and I think uh, so far from what I'm hearing, everybody seems pretty happy with that. Um, of course, you know, I remember when Neil Brown got hired. How many uh, how many tweets and and uh, uh, Facebook posts I saw that was talking about what a great hire, and then. Two years later, they're they're wanting to string him up and get, get rid of him, and uh, uh, so. But well, everything I'm hearing so far uh, is positive. Now, Frank, and I'll ask you about this. I'm sure you know uh, the coach's name is uh, it's spelled Darian. I heard him say on the radio the other day that it was pronounced. I think they said Dar Darren. I believe is what they said. Uh, but Devries or Devries. So we'll get the uh, I'll try to get the pronunciation right from you. I'm sure you have uh, uh, you have that down in your in your stat sheet there somewhere yeah i think it's Devries, but uh, i guess Dervries. we're gonna have to check that you know in terms of uh, the thing you know what i did is and you guys have seen this uh yeah. we came down to these two guys uh darian Devries and then mark byington from james madison Devries from drake and byington ended up at vanderbilt uh yep. and it looks like the charleston coach is going to louisville so these top end uh, group of five uh, coaches. But if you look at these two profiles, if you're the AD, any, if any one of us is the AD, it's like these two are clones. One's yep. 48, the other's 47. Um, the big difference here is that uh, Darian DeVries um, was an assistant for a long time, twice as long as Byington. Uh, and DeVries did all of his assistant work at, at Creighton under two great coaches. Uh, and then uh, Byington moved around, uh, and also uh, DeVries uh, went to one school as a head coach where uh, Byington uh, moved around. But look at the look at the record. Um, yep. You know, their high percentage wins, and if you look at the at the uh, uh, wins and losses over the last two years, they're almost identical. 55 yeah. and 15, and 54 and 15 in very comparable league leagues. I, I would think, you know, living in the Midwest as long as I as I had, that uh, the Missouri Valley is just a great league. But nevertheless, um, that's uh, that's incredible. And so I think I think this guy's a winner. And uh, um, you know, you've heard some things, Daryl, that out of the shoot suggests this guy know, this guy knows how to conduct himself. Yeah, um, I have some friends that know him and dealt with him in the past. They they say he's a really good guy. As you can see, he's definitely a good coach. Um, he he's he's reached out to Catlett already, and um, yeah. so you know you know Catlett said that um, Beeline nor Huggins ever recalled him. So he 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 was he he showed the initiative to find his number and get his number from somebody and make that call. So that shows a lot about his character. 
uh, as a person. So, you know, as we spoke about last week, you know, the, you know, that's the person who built the, you know, the bricks for the Coliseum, you know, so um, I thought that was a good, you know, gesture on his part. Absolutely. You know, a couple of things that uh, caught my attention, you go back and you uh, read up on these guys just a little bit and you see their, their past uh, coaching history. Uh, and and Bington, Byington, how you say his name, he was the same way. But when you look and you see these guys go to a program that's down here and then the next year it's here, 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 you know, it just keeps rising. And I think uh, when you see coaches that do that and build those programs, you know, that's recruiting, that's, that's culture, it's all those types of things. Uh, and I think that, uh, you know, you can see from his history uh, that he does that. And I think, you know, obviously West Virginia, um, you know, is going to have to get this program, you know, structured back, get structured back and get the program, uh, you know, trending upward again. Uh, and you look at a guy like that and you think that's the type of person that we need. Also, um, uh, you know, the fact that, you know, where he's from, uh, you know, he's from Iowa and, and uh, you know, a lot of people were talking about the cultural fit. And uh, I've heard up here in Morgantown already that um, you know, people here have talked to him that know, you know, know him or know of him. And, you know, they're tickled to death to be coming to Morgantown because they said it's just, you know, it, it's where, like where they're from. It's just a, a small, small college place and, and uh, they're excited uh, to be in Morgantown, and I think culturally he'll, you know, them and his family, of course, will fit pretty well. The other thing I like is he has a six, seven son who's a guard who's a hell of a player, and <laughs> he's coming with him. I like that too. So uh, I think I think everything's positive right now. And like like Daryl said, he's uh, already shown he has a little bit of character uh, uh, by reaching out to Coach Catlin. I think that's important. I think that's awesome that he did that, and uh, I, I look forward to it. I think he's going to be a good fit, and I think it's going to be fun to watch. Stone, I don't know how much attention you've been paying to that. Uh, I know uh, you're probably busier, and, and me and Frank, and uh, I think you and Daryl more busy than we are, but uh, you younger guys seem to have a better handle on things. What do you think about uh, about the new basketball guy? Oh, I'm excited to see what he's got. I mean, high, <clears throat> uh, it was a 73, 72%. Yeah, 73%. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That, that's a tough number to reach, especially, you know, just being a coach or just being a head coach, you know, starting yeah. off. Usually it's the opposite. You know, you see him slowly, you know, build it over. But no, it's been a high percent. He's he's got the magic, you know, and, and that's that's probably what uh, put him over top. You know, he's something about him. maybe he's a he's a uh, a personnel or like a player guy. You know, just really relates to the players or uh, you know, really good um, talker. I, I don't or like uh, just convinced convinced uh, uh, you know Rem Baker, but you know. I, I heard uh six or or was it six seven son, so yeah, uh, is he <laughs> and he's a player too. <laughs> All right, Morgantown High District. <laughs> Have you seen him, Daryl? Have you seen him play? No, nah, yeah, but that's only one player. We need we need ten twelve players now. So he's a player. They, yeah. they said the other day, uh, ESPN said if he would go into the portal. Uh, he would be a top five player in the one of the top five players in the portal. So, uh, and I watched him uh, the, the the first round, and man, I mean, he can play. He, he's a good player, and I think there's already been another one, uh, another guard, a freshman that uh, they said is coming to WU as well. It's transferring with him, so uh, we'll, we'll get a few players from there. That'll be that'll be good. But uh, yeah. you know, I think I think you know if you can draw, and this is no knock on Drake or Creighton anybody, but if you can draw talent like that to you know. I know it's his son, so it's probably wasn't real hard to get him signed. But uh, you know, if you can draw talent like they have, and he wasn't the only player they had, to Drake, you know, uh, you surely with the money and stuff that's available, you should be able to get him here at West Virginia too. I think, and, right. and uh, obviously he has a pretty good handle on that. So I think that's shown from his team because you know, they're not. You know, that wasn't the only player they had. He's a good player. I mean, he's really good. But uh, they had some other really good players as well. And I heard today, and I don't know if this is correct or not. I heard on uh, some some on the radio said they think uh, that there's five of those players from Drake that are going to enter enter the portal uh, or transfer. I mean, so, you got to be careful because uh, you know Drake's league and the Big Twelve is two different things. You know, you can't take all. Of it. You know what I mean? Like it's it's a it's just, oh yeah yeah really, you know playing playing good in that league and then, you know you. You know, you do well in, in one one or two games in the NCAA doesn't mean you got a, you know, 16 game, 18 game season in the Big 12. So, you know, you got to pick and choose. We, you know, we got to go back to 
building the program, not just the portal to stuff. So, you know, don't right. can't get caught up in, in that. So it's, it's, it's a fine line. And I know he don't want to lose a lot, you know, getting his son and who's a big time talent, but I would be careful, uh, getting, you know, you know, usually guys will not get guys what they're comfortable with, but you know, that's, that's why we're in this dilemma now, you know, so. Mm-hmm. Well, I think, I think, um, like I said, the other the other kid, the freshman, has got a really good player as well. Uh, and, I, and one of the things we were going to talk about was what's going. Was to he take going to Drake or he was going to? He was at Drake. Yes, he was a freshman at Drake. Yes, um, and he's coming to WU, and uh, he's a good player as well. Now the other ones, I don't know. I don't know where they're going. They haven't said anything yet. But um, I think you know, we were talking about what it's going to take for him to be successful. I think to what Daryl said, uh, you know, he he, and I'm assuming he can. Uh, will need to recognize. Big 12 talent, you know, are these guys good enough to play in the Big 12? Sure. And, um, that, that's that's going to be critical, I think, to his success. I think I think Neil Brown went through that. I think, you know, if mm-hmm. you remember when he first started, uh, we took a lot of players, you know, from Bowling Green and, and some of the mid-majors, and uh, they just weren't quite good enough. They weren't bad, but they weren't quite good enough to win in the Big 12, and I think he figured that out. Uh, and I think, uh, uh, I think basketball is a little bit different, it's a little easier because you don't have as many. Uh, many people uh, to draw in, but uh, I think that's what's going to take for him to be successful is to recognize what Big 12 talent is and what is needed to be successful in the Big 12. Uh, and the uh, quicker he figures that out, the better. I think we'll get good players in and, and that'll be okay. But, uh, yeah, I, I don't think he's going to take them off fall from, from Drake. Uh, otherwise, they would be, you know, somewhere yeah. else. <laughs> you know. Yeah. No, it's a, you know, the Missouri Valley Conference is a good conference, but it's a yeah. major yeah. conference. Right, uh, right. You know, James Madison experienced that the other night. They looked yeah. like world beaters in the first round. And oh. they were overmatched, completely yeah. overmatched. You know, they yeah. they dismantled, uh, they dismantled Wisconsin. Wisconsin. I mean, that wasn't even close. I talked with a couple of Wisconsin fans, and they said, "Man, that game was over in five minutes." But yep. uh, uh, Daryl's right, and of course, his career <clears throat> is on the line. But the thing that strikes me, uh, and I know we're going to talk about baseball now is, you know, when you look at the coaches that WVU has, head coaches and the staffs, you got to say to yourself, boy, has it been better? Um, yeah. I can't remember in the recent past where you were, I've had as much confidence across the board, you know, uh, wrestling, uh, the, the national championships were last week and WVU did well. Uh, one guy was wrestling actually for a national championship. Uh, mm-hmm. Soccer, both soccer coaches. Uh, men's basketball, we've got great potential there. Kellogg looks fantastic on the yep. women's side. Uh, and Neil Brown, we're going to talk about the press conference and how we felt about that. But, boy, you really have to be impressed. And this baseball team, uh, let me throw this up, uh, you know, we're right in it again. That was a great yep. season last year, and uh, we're just a game and a half out of first place. And actually – after Oklahoma threw a no hitter at us last week, uh, the Mountaineers came out and took the next two games. Um, yeah. And so Oklahoma State comes in this weekend. Maisie in his last season has a really good squad. We're still hurting with uh, Weatherholt, uh, National Player of the Year, hamstring issues. Played in the opening um, series against Stetson, hasn't played since. We need him. Uh, he was hitting 360 something before he went out, but uh, this is a team to watch, and you can watch it on ESPN Plus. Yep, they're they're uh, they're playing pretty well, and like you said, yeah, I kind of you kind of like the resilience there. They got, uh, uh, I think, it was it Ohio State? You said uh, just destroyed them there in one game. It came right back and uh, won the next one. Shut somebody out, 15 nothing, right after that, and uh, yeah. so they're pretty resilient and. Uh, you know, baseball, now, Frank, you don't know this, but I coached a little high school baseball in my day, too, for about four years. And you learn one thing is if you don't have good pitching, you're not going to win. And uh, that's right. Know, it'll, come, it, it'll come down to that. And, and uh, so far, their pitching has been pretty, pretty good, pretty solid. They, they had that one game where they got blown out. But, uh, uh, but yeah, they look uh, they look pretty solid. Yeah. The thing is, when you look at the stats of this team, I, I have you, one thing you'll notice in that chart that I have up is that uh, the numbers are dissimilar, that some teams have played nine games and other teams yeah. have only played six. And it's obviously the weather difference. Most of those nine game conference teams 
uh, are in the south, uh, southwest. But, uh, I mean, what is – I'm looking at it right now. The team ERA for WVU right now is 4.77. Um, and I'm going, okay, six runs a game, and we're 15 and 10. And I looked at the opponents are 5.88. Yeah, um, yeah. So a uh, little bit uh, uneven in terms of starting. A um, couple good arms, though. Uh, Van Campen, Gavin Van Campen, and Aiden Major between them have won eight games already. Um, so I think there's potential. And what I really like about college baseball is, I don't know about you guys, but I've migrated uh, from uh, watching uh, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, major league baseball to watching college baseball now because I think it's a better product. That's I probably think so everything. too. Yeah, yeah I, think it, I think it is too. Yeah, and, and and you talk about the ERA, you know, a 4.0 ERA in college is not bad because those aluminum bats and things are so many more hits yeah. and, and runs scored uh, in college baseball than what there is in the major leagues. And so I think a, I think a 4 4.0 ERA or whatever it was it is is really pretty good if you would compare it across the board. And now I'm sure there's individual pitchers that have lower ERAs than that uh, on other teams, but as far as a team ERA. That's not terrible because you know most of these college teams are they're like everything else. You get past their their one two three guy, you know that that fourth guy that rotation, you know is not always uh, not always yeah. real good. They can blow that ERA up in a hurry. Uh, but yeah, West Virginia has a couple of good pitchers, and and uh, you have to have at least a couple of good ones uh, to be able to be successful. Yeah. So I think yeah, they're on the right track, man. They're and and they're fun to watch. I watched them play the other night. Yeah. Uh, well, to reinforce your point too about the ERA, looking at it alone. The flip side of that is what's the batting average of the opposition? Right, it's only right. it's only two thirty five. Yeah. West Virginia is yeah. hitting three uh, thirty points higher and has uh, what was it now uh, thirty four to eighteen home runs. And right, so right. I'm looking at those data and saying, you know, uh, it's not bad for for right. a team who really had a breakthrough year and wants to continue that. We'll see. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's right here. Are you? Uh, Daryl's like, y'all talking baseball. I'm getting out of here, man. <laughs> <laughs> Daryl said, I want to go eat some dinner. I ain't talking about no baseball. <laughs> yeah. I bet you I bet you was a heck of a high school baseball player. Oh, uh, no, nah, I can't hit. I can do everything. I can do everything <laughs> yeah. else, and I can't hit that fastball. Uh, I could have been a left-handed pitcher, man. <laughs> All right, Daryl, we appreciate you, man. It's good talking to you. Good All right. you again. Yeah, All right, take we'll care. Good we'll see y'all later. All right. All right, All right Daryl. All right, while Daryl checks out there, we'll jump on, uh, uh, Frank, to our uh, uh, next topic. And I know Stone's like, thank God, we're going to talk about something besides basketball and baseball. <laughs> Let's talk about some football. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, uh, I tried out for baseball my sophomore year in high school. And um, on the first tryouts, the head coach came up to me after after the practice. was like, hey, man, you're a phenomenal football player. You should just stick with that. <laughs> focus, <laughs> focus on football. You know what's odd? This is what's odd about me. I was a really good baseball player, and I'm not bragging that I could hit. It's just a natural thing. I could just hit and I could field and, and could pitch. And did, I did all that and was really good at baseball. I, I always liked to play baseball better than any sport I played. I always liked to watch football more than any sport, but I always liked to coach basketball because I coach football, basketball, and baseball. Uh, but I coached basketball for the longest amount of time. That was my favorite thing to coach, but I'd rather watch football than anything. <laughs> and I'd rather play mm -hmm. baseball. Not anymore, I wouldn't rather play baseball. But back in the day, I would rather play baseball. But anyway, uh, no, nobody cares about what I like to do. But let's go on to uh, – let's get on to football. Uh, Neil Brown uh, has had a couple of press conferences already since spring ball uh, has gotten it underway. And uh, from what I've listened to on his, on his press conferences – uh, Coach Brown sounds uh, very positive and upbeat about uh, about this year's team. And uh, Stone, I know you said you went and watched some practice, uh, and you got a little feel for all of it. So I'm just going to let you go with it and talk about what you saw and what the feeling was that you had uh, during the practice that you watched. Oh yeah, man. So first of all, in the teams I've been in the past, you know, one thing I noticed is you hear a lot of negativity. You hear a lot of vampires. Vampires are, are energy suckers. You know, they'll just come in and they'll Complain about this, complain, complain about this guy not doing this, complain. And it just it just destroys your energy, you know. And and this time around, you know, first thing I really noticed, uh, there wasn't a lot of uh, vampirism. I I really didn't hear any anything really negative other than a kid or a kid complaining about his, his injured shoulder, you know. But um, I mean, first thing 
uh, Coach Brown, you know, sat everyone down in the in the indoor, you know, set the standard for the practice. Talked about energy, sent them out there, man. Uh, they got they got to roll, and it was a high energy practice. I mean, everyone everyone seemed excited. I mean, it was it was just uh, well, what some coaches call shells, but with the protective you know pad, uh, not actual shoulder pads and helmet. But um, I mean, everyone looked excited. Uh, Garrett Green looked good today. Nico Markia looked good today. I mean, two different styles of quarterbacks, but man, I mean, they're they're looking good. So I don't envy uh, Coach Brown with making that decision. Yeah, you know? yeah. He spoke uh, in the press conference. He spoke highly of uh, of Nico and and the work that he's put in and the maturity that he's shown uh, from from last year to now and his grasp of the system and everything. And he he really spoke highly of him. So you know, if things continue in that uh, trend, I wouldn't be surprised that we don't see. Uh, quite a bit of Nico this fall. I mean, Garrett Green obviously is your starter coming in. Uh, who knows what happens though during during springtime and the fall practice. Uh, but if nothing unusual happens, I think you might end up seeing both of them play just a little bit. He was very mm -hmm. uh, very upbeat about Nico and his uh, his work. And he talked about a lot of players. And uh, this is one thing I haven't heard him say a lot in the past. He talked about uh, a lot of players being trained. Uh, at different positions, and uh, right. he said, "You know, we we got to have people ready at all positions." He even mentioned uh, Milam on the line, uh, and and the fact that uh, he had played some guard and center already, working on some of that because uh, you know his draft status. Uh, you, you don't know what they may be looking for, and uh, he felt like getting him schooled in those things would help him down the line. And and you never know in a game, it's like the bowl game. You never know, or before the bowl, last game of the season, you never know. Uh, when somebody's going to get hurt and somebody's going to replace you in an important position like the center. Uh, so he talked a lot about interchanging people. And uh, and he said mostly in, in, in the middle and the back. So he was talking about linebacker area and secondary and talked about moving people around different places and that they were looking forward to seeing those guys, how they perform when they got actual uh, – start hitting and that sort of thing. So he was uh, he was pretty excited. He seemed about that as well, which I hadn't heard him talk much about that. Mm -hmm. And he gave the injury update and the injury report. It wasn't bad. He said uh, – you know, everything other than a few players had to have surgery during the offseason. We're still recovering from that. But it sounds like they're pretty good uh, health and strength coming in. Uh, he seemed really upbeat. I, I thought uh, I thought both his press conference, he was he, he sounds excited. And Frank, I know you've watched him. And uh, uh, what was your feel on that? Well, you know, Stone and I were talking, uh, Craig, before you came on and before the show started. And, and I was mentioning, you know, um, leadership is leadership is leadership. Uh, and you know it when you see it. And I took notes. Uh, uh, that was, what, a 45-minute, his first uh, yep. press conference yep. before yep. the spring practice. I was taking notes. I'm going to share those with my with my son, who is a vice president of a large hospital. And, I, you know, it's he, very impressive. He knows, he knows his craft. He knows what he needs to do. He doesn't sugarcoat it. Uh, like you said, this, this, what he called uh, the, the dual training. I mean, the point he made, he said, you know, I didn't know this. Frazier never played center in high school. Uh, and so he had to learn his way into playing center, which obviously he did very well. But the thing that I liked about him too is candor. He said, you know, we're one class away from where we need to be, but the depth and breadth of what we have. And Every Mountaineer fan isn't going to be surprised. Maybe they will be surprised by, by what he said and what I'm going to say, because we know the defense needs shoring up. Uh, yeah. And he, he talked probably for 20 minutes or so before he ever got into the, uh, got into the offense. And if you look at, um, at uh, uh, our colleague, um, uh, let me put it up right here, Randy Flincham, who will be on right after the spring game, giving his assessment uh, of the spring game and the portal. Uh, this is a summary of what Coach Brown said in his opening presser. And if you look at that last set, those are the transfers. Uh, nine transfers are participating in spring ball. By the way, that group now is ranked 19th in the country. These are the portal guys. 19th in the country by uh, on3.com, which, which is considered to be the gold standard of the portal. You look at all the guys that are being brought in, um, cornerback, safety, you got one wide receiver who's very good, linebacker, defensive tackle, offensive tackle, 
cornerback, cornerback, outside linebacker. And uh, the uh, TJ Jackson is the highest rated um, portal uh, player coming in. And you got to remember, too, and we talked about this on the show, West Virginia lost twice as many players to the portal as they gained. But the quality yeah. of what they brought in positions yeah. up us in the top 20. The other thing is he talked about the need, for example, to have backups to Cole Taylor because Taylor's not going to be able to participate. Uh, in, we won't see him in the spring game. Um, but, uh, you know, these are guys that underwent, as you said, Greg, uh, surgery in the off season. He's being very careful uh, with Tomas Rimac, uh, also with Cole Taylor, et cetera. I'm really looking forward to Fisher, uh, see what he does at defensive end. And the guy yep. that I've talked about before is Montre Miller, uh, who didn't hardly played at all last year uh, and sat out almost all of the year, but he's going to go full speed. Uh, it, he, you know, at cornerback, we're, we're expecting big things out of him. So, Boy, I'll tell you, I'm really excited for the season, really excited. I think he's the real deal, and I just don't understand, <clears throat> and I have a tough time accepting uh, people who still question him and say, let's get a real coach in here. I think he's the real deal. I mean, yeah. I'm very impressed. Yeah, and I think, too, again, and I've said this on our show several times, uh, you have a man there that is a quality human being. You know, uh, you have somebody that clearly cares about the program. He clears, clearly cares about the players. Uh, he runs a clean program, obviously. Uh, and and you can tell he's just a good person. You know he knows football. You know he's, uh, you know, an excellent coach when it comes to the X's and O's and all those things. You know, game management was something people complain about. He's gotten a whole lot better at that. Uh, and, uh, you know, I don't know that we can do a lot better. I think, yeah, I think he's a fine fit for us. And I think he does, he's been doing a fine job. I think, I think we're, you know, we got the right guy and, uh, we just have to get, get off of him. And I, 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 uh, the other day, somebody on Twitter, my son had reposted this. Some guy had asked that if you had a, if you had a, a brief talk with Ren Baker prior to talking to coach DeVries, uh, what advice would you give him in, in five seconds? Uh, and I said, don't lose two games in a row or they'll be ready to run you out of town. That was my advice, <laughs> you know, because, uh, you know, everybody just, uh, they start on this stuff and they just, you know, I mean, it makes it, you, you, and you know, these coaches know these things, you know, it's not like we don't live in a world where, you know, people say things you don't know about. I mean, it's instantly, it's on, it's on Twitter, it's on Facebook, it's on uh, whatever else is out there, Instagram, Snapchat, these coaches hear this chatter. And as much as they may try to ignore it, and, and they obviously most don't respond to it, but you know it has to bother them a little bit. And uh, I, 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 I have to believe that he would have to say, why are they hating on me so bad? You know, uh, because I think he's done a good job. He's slowly, you know, he's slowly getting it together. Uh, he's slowly building the program, I think. And he's he's retaining people that we need to retain, you know, as far as the portal's concerned. I know we, we're going to lose players every year. It's the nature of the beast. It happens at every school. Uh, but the thing is, when you look at the people we lost and the people who stayed, uh, it's a big difference, you know. And a lot of these players will enter that portal and end up at a lesser place because they're just not good enough yet to play here, and they don't want to wait. So, you know, what we lost, I don't think there was a player or two maybe they think, man, I wish we could have kept him. Uh, but I don't think there was anybody that, you know, we said the sky's falling because this guy's leaving. So he's keeping players now that we need to keep. He's filling gaps with this, with the portal that we need to fill in gaps with. And not only is he filling those gaps, he's filling those gaps with talented people that can play. Right. Uh, you That's know, you right. look at these, uh, a couple of these defensive backs were great players at, at you know, uh, Northwestern, I think. And then there was another one, one you mentioned, uh, I can't remember now the names. You get, get, you know, I'm, I'm from Troy. Troy, yeah, yeah, good, good players, and uh, so he's filling the gaps where we need it, and uh, I just think we're on the uptick. I, yeah. I think, and I, and I think even you know if we win seven, eight, nine games, I think that, that, that's good. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. we played a tough conference, and uh, it's hard to win games. You know, I don't care yeah. where you play at or what team you are, it's hard to win college football games, and because uh, uh, yeah. everybody has talent, and uh, so I just think we need to. Uh, let him keep going. I think he's heading in the right direction. I think he's doing a good job, yeah. really good job. And the thing, Stone, the thing that's happening, guys, Stone, we're starting to get some respect we didn't have before. Right. Here's one. Um, sorry to block you guys out, but here's this just came out. 
top 10 football teams at each power conference for 2024. And there's West Virginia. There you go. There's West Virginia. And we, we haven't seen that before. Uh, yep. you know, last year we were 14th. And then uh, Greg and I were talking about this earlier this week. Again, sorry to block you out there. This is a, a, a proposed, this is a, and everybody has an opinion, but West Virginia is on the list of a college uh, football playoff dark horse. You know, yep. my God, if that had happened last year, people would have said, what? But yeah. <laughs> uh, this is great, Stone. I mean, you got to be enthused. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, Coach Brown, uh, he was the first day I met him back in uh, – and, and who he is now is clearly two different people. You know, every day, you know, we grow and we better ourselves. I mean, you guys still are, still are growing. You guys aren't done. You know, he wasn't done last year, and he's gonna, he's only going to get better. You know, and, you know, this, it all, this reminds me – of Skylar Howard went whenever I was on the team. We went ten and three in twenty sixteen, I believe. And um I mean the crowd booed him off the, the field and we were we were ten and three. The ten yep. and two our own home crowd. You know, and that blows my mind. Like when was the last time we were ten and three? With Skylar Howard. He, yeah. you know so it's um it's it's crazy to see you know the same thing ha happening happening you know I mean everyone says history repeats itself and that's that's uh, that's this is just another case of it here at least but um I'm really fired up man I mean Coach Brown is really changing the program you know he's he's recruiting the right guys he's starting to do the right things he's starting to utilize you know the the um our, our you know artillery he has in, in his uh, weapon cache you know he's. He's on the rise, and I'm really excited. Um, I mean, we got smart guys back there. We got, you know, uh, like Aubrey uh, Burks. You know, I mean, he's got a really good head on 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 his shoulders for sure. I mean, really mature. But like we were talking about earlier, you know, the, the 17, 18 year old kids and and the 22. You know, the difference is is the maturity and the discipline to go and do the right things all the time. And so that's why they're it's like men, you know, because they're they're on their they already know what, what they're gonna do, what they're capable of. Whereas like 18, you, you know, you don't really know because you're, you're not doing the right things. You're not, you know, doing the extra mile uh, as you would when you're like 22 or 23, you know. And you know, he's he's recruiting a lot of these you know older guys, and um, they got, got good good heads on their shoulders. A lot of them are really good good guys actually. I you know, was talking to them, good people, you know. And, yeah. That that really translates, especially when when you see the older guys coaching the younger guys and taking them under their wings, you know, across the board. And that's why I'm really excited it's because everyone's gonna be on the same page. Everyone's working hard. You know, the discipline and um, accountability is great at WVU. I mean, guys are staying on top of each other in a positive way. It's not like a negative, like a, you aren't doing what you're supposed to be doing. It's like, hey man, you were supposed to do this. All right, let me help you and show you how how it's supposed to be done. You know, or you should have done this, man. You know, like it's it's really positive, and uh, I'm really excited for the season. I mean, I'm fired up. It's gonna be good. Yeah, and you you uh you mentioned the, the type of people he's recruiting. You know, the quality of people. Uh, I think which goes a long way. And I and I, I don't have a stat on this. I would love to see a stat. And I'm sure somebody has it. But go back uh, prior to Coach Brown. Uh, and look at the number of like personal foul penalties we got for just dumb things that we would do. You know, uh, I remember that being a real point of contention back six, seven years ago uh, about how we would just get these personal foul penalties at the craziest times and the craziest things. Uh, and, and I think that shows a little bit about your discipline and and the type of people you have and that sort of thing. Um, from leaders. You know, you, yeah, yeah. And I think I think you see a difference now in the, in the players. I mean, you just see. You just see a difference. I, I don't even really know uh, what I'm saying here, how to describe that, but um, just a better attitude, just a, just a more focus on, you know, what you should be doing and, and, and not on, uh, you know, getting somebody a cheap shot or whatever, you know, uh, you know, more focus on what, what's going on. Uh, and, and I think you see a lot more of that now. And I think, like you said, I think Coach Brown's growing. Uh, I think he gets better every year. Um, he gets more comfortable and, uh, you know, you just listen to him talk. He's, he just sounds more confident and uh, uh, more comfortable. And I, I'm like you. I'm excited because I think good things are coming. I think, uh, I, of course, you know, I, I'm also the type to say, well, you know, if we'd fall on our face and, and win six, seven games, 
I'm still okay with that. I'm, I'm okay. I'm not okay with losing. I don't want to win every game. Uh, but I don't think it something like that means that our program is not going in the right direction. It just takes time to build it, and you got to give them time. And uh, I've I've said for the last two or three years, if I were uh, Ren Baker, I would come out and say, here's the deal, fans. He's here, and he's going to be here for the next three years, whether we go 0 and 10 for three straight years. He's going to be here. So let's just drop all this talk, and let's get behind the team and support him a little bit because I remember what you were saying about Skylar Howard. Uh, they they treated him terrible, and he didn't do anything but win. <laughs> you know, he won all the time, and the fans were awful to him, you know. That guy was in the weight room like day and night. I mean, he was constantly doing extra work, and and I'm, I'm proud to say that you know I played I played with him. So, um, I mean, I have a completely different opinion of Skylar Howard than most Mountaineer fans, and it's, it blows my mind because he's actually a really really good dude. Most of the, or you know, I mean, everyone has their bad moments, but I mean, he's a really good dude, you yeah. know. Um, and he did a lot of winning. <laughs> you know, he won a lot. You know. You know it's, it's it's crazy that he got booed off the stage, but you know I think I think Neil Brown's really starting to get get uh, an I you know a really good grasp of the college world. I mean him talking about you know moving or having guys be you know um, uh, like like there or like or swear switch guys that could play different positions. You know I think that's that's great for multiple reasons. For one, I mean a guy goes down, you know you, you have a you need a certain quality of skill. You know, well, we can take this guy because this is this other guy's really good here too. You know, and so having those, um, having those, you know, versatile guys. I mean, you you can really, especially on defense. You know, you know, screw up an offense or really make an impact on um, a defense alignment on the offense because you know through film. You know, you, you every week, especially at the college level, you know, you're studying film, you're watching for tendencies. You know, this guy takes an outward step every time so you know so that means this or you know he's leaning back so you, you you really put a lot of time into studying those tendencies and so having you know so guys that can do multiple things I mean, well that's gonna screw that up i mean mm -hmm. that's hard to make a good uh good defensive plan against you know going or going against like oh i didn't know i was gonna, I was gonna be going against the guard i thought i was going against the tackle you know the right tackle instead of the left guard but you know, um, and then you know, I, I can go on and list even more reasons. But that's that's what's so great about the game. You know, minor changes like make the world of difference. You know, you got a guy who's a who's a coverage guy, who's also really twitchy. You know, and then you put him down and have him rush. Well, man, I didn't know I didn't know that you were here. I didn't know you 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 were covered. You know what I mean? Because uh, offenses are prepared for that. You know, so now that mm -hmm. makes even have to go even further into, into you know stretching the game out you know studying their their film and all but um man i, mean, I could talk about this yeah. for, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure i'm gonna start rambling here in a second so. no, all right. <laughs> but we, you know, we do we it talked, all the time <laughs> yeah we talked about learning but what made me think when you were talking uh stone was and you know this as a coach and greg knows it as a coach it's a craft uh and it's you're a craftsperson and when I listened to that press conference, uh, you could tell he is growing into his really a high level understanding of his craft. You know, for example, when he was talking about the linebackers and saying, you know, um, we're going, we're really going to have Mike, we're going to be, we're going to have Mike's back there, not Will's, Mike's, yeah. because he's looking at his personnel and what he wants to do. And he says, you know, the tall, lanky guys, the Will's, not, nah, we're going to have Mike guys. <laughs> and, um, you know, he, the other thing I think is really important. You can tell despite Greg, and you're right, the, the battering he gets, he's comfortable in his own skin, which helps him uh, repel that. He knows what he wants to do. And when he talked about personnel, the kind of coaches he wants to bring in. And for those who haven't watched the press conference, I was very impressed by the point he made. I want the players and the coaches to be together the first thing in the day before he said we would do it in the afternoon. That meant the whole day went by be before the players and coaches were together. He said, "I now we have those players and coaches first thing together. And it sets the tone for the day. This guy has his head screwed on well. And uh, boy, I tell you, I am, I'm always excited when I, when I experience people who know what they're doing. And he knows what he's doing. 
Yeah, you can listen to him and you can tell that. I'll tell you another thing I, I thought about too was that we haven't talked about much was his contract when he restructured that contract and you know basically took less money so his assistance could be paid more. Yes. And I think, you know, that's a sacrifice he didn't have to make. And no. I think, you know, players see that, coaches see that, they know he's willing to sacrifice for the good of the program. Uh, everybody gets all in on stuff like that when you have a leader that is willing to, uh, you know, give up some of his own good fortune to help others. And, uh, you know, he did that. And I thought, man, you don't see many coaches in today's world uh, willing to give up money. You know, they're mm -hmm. all about the money. And, and he, he gave up a significant amount of money to give to his assistant coaches. And I thought that was a, a great step as well. But again, I think it shows the maturity and the growth that he has uh, and is, uh, uh, you know, uh, again, a, another good uh, aspect of, uh, of himself and his character. Yes, 100%. Um... Oh, I was just gonna say, whenever you're making sacrifices like that, like you want, you want to fall for that, to follow that guy. I mean, that's passion. Right. That's how I know that that we're gonna be successful because he's given it all. It's, sorry, he's given his all every single day. You know, that's yep. I mean, you want to sacrifice, you know, money, or your your livelihood, unless you were truly passionate about it. You yep. know, and it's, it's like being a teacher and spending your own money on notebooks and pencils. You yep. know. Because you're passionate, and that's how I know he'll be good. Because he's gonna find a way to be good. He loves this game, and he loves the state, especially this school. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right, uh, Frank. We're starting to run a little short of time. You got any uh, final yeah. words you'd like to throw out there? Well, uh, we put the banner up uh, earlier that uh, Mark is doing his State of the Channel. Yeah. Uh, many people know, if not everyone, we're on the Voice of College Football Network. We're the we're on the West Virginia Channel and uh, every wednesday night uh and uh mark rogers who runs a network if you can flip right over and join them in stream they started at eight and also mark wanted to let everyone know that uh he's relaunching the texas channel sounds like heresy they're leaving the conference but <laughs> but they're on the network so michigan's on the network too so anyway <laughs> uh, and he's doing it with uh with his colleague, uh, Matthew uh, Miller, and they're gonna start next Monday night. It's gonna be extended. I don't know how long it's gonna go, but it's gonna be more than an hour. And then they're gonna be on every Monday night. And uh, as uh, as Greg knows, they invited uh, us to be part of their channel. Uh, Dale Wolfley was on the channel. And so we're, we're happy to be part of that. So uh, yeah. that's the least we can do, is Absolutely. to promote the channel. It's a great channel. That's right, yes it is. Stone, any final words from you? No, um, just other than like, I'm excited for the season. I'm excited to see you know who wins this quarterback battle, man. I mean, it's yeah. it's gonna be a tough one, and I'm excited to see you know how the defense changes going from you know what we were to you know what we are now. You know. Yep. 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 I think you're right. I think a lot of people are excited about those same things. Looking forward to seeing that. Uh, just like we are, we can't wait. You know, yeah. how personnel. Very mm -hmm. right. Yep. It sounds yep. like he, he really wants to. It, am I right, uh, guys? He we're playing the four three, but he's not. I got the impression we're not quite there yet on the four three. We need another year. Was that is that a fair interpretation? Yeah, I kind of gathered that. Yeah, that's kind of kind of what I felt. That maybe it was going to be a maybe a little variation of the four three. It wasn't going to quite be your typical four three. Uh, <laughs> but, thank you kelly appreciate you but yeah um i mean i mean the three four can become a four three depending on you know, where you bring your linebacker right right up right on the line either side they have a field end they have a boundary end you know and then you got your nose guard and the nose guard position is the, was one of the craziest positions you can be in the three four because you got to be yeah. everywhere you got yeah. a, you're basically a, a, a a uh, tiger tank, you know what I mean? You got to be big and you got to be fast. You got to get there. You got to come 100 miles an hour. You know, we had a, who was it, McDougal, a, a recruit back back in the day, man. I mean, he wasn't he wasn't six foot. He was maybe like 5'10", five, 5'9". Five, but, man, that had, that that kid had a spin move like no other. I mean, the way he moved, it was it was incredible. You know, he was like a top just watching him. You know, so that's what we that's something similar to what we got to have there at, at the news guard. That's where it really um, matters, especially in the three in the three forts, because you got to be able to stop that center from climbing, you know. And then on top of that, you're getting double teamed almost every other play, 
you know, so not only do you have to be fast, but you got to be strong and have a good tech. Okay. Yes. I'm, I'm really excited to see uh, how the Jimmys and, and Joes fit into the X's and O's. So, mm -hmm. but that's yeah. it for me. All right, Stone, we appreciate you. Uh, and again, uh, I'm the same as Stone. Can't wait till it starts. I love football season. And I think we're going to, we're trending in the right direction. And I'm also, of course, as a basketball coach, looking forward to this weekend and the Sweet 16 going on. Uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. We'll keep rooting for the baseball team and uh, we'll check out our new basketball coach. We'll be talking about that some more as we go along uh, as well. Guys, we appreciate uh, appreciate you again. Uh, Stone, we appreciate you coming on and, and talking some football with us. Me and Frank need help with that all the time. Uh, so we appreciate you uh, giving us some expertise uh, in that area. Uh, thanks to Daryl uh, Prue for being with us talking basketball. Uh, and Frank, co-hosting, I appreciate you as always being here by my side to keep me on track and keep uh, keep <laughs> If it wasn't for you, uh, this thing would fall apart. I'll guarantee you if I was having to run under control, we'd be in trouble. Uh, we thank everyone for tuning in and, and watching us. We ask you again, make sure you like and subscribe uh, on YouTube. Go check out the uh, uh, the new show launching, uh, the, the launch of the, uh, the Texas channel, I guess, they're going to talk about. And uh, you'll want to go and uh, check that out as well. Thanks to everybody for tuning in tonight. We look forward to coming to you again next Wednesday night. We hope with another great show. Good night, everybody. <laughs>